What's up, other truckers? I'm Ryan. Hey guys, I'm Keishan. Yashu, what's your name? Bro, we're not doing this right now. A long, long time ago on the moon, there was cheese everywhere. And the cheese people had a room full of extra, extra, extra. And they wanted to fill it with a block of cheese. And they thought, hmm. I wonder if there are specific dimensions of the cheese to make the cheese a big cheese. In 1869, Gandhi was just invented. In 1643, Newton was just invented and he sat under a tree. And one day an apple decided to try to kill him but failed and instead caused a chain reaction for Newton to- And this is fun and all, but as a small side quest, Newton also decided to invent- Calculus has us in calculus. Communism. And by doing so, he also invented nerds. Well, actually, he invented it with Leibniz, but no one cares about him. The first part of calculus is limits. Limits are cool because you can do stuff with them. And although they may seem useless, they are the base foundation of calculus. One day, Newton asked his friend Leibniz, Did you ever think about reaching a number? But never actually reaching that number, but deep down within us, the human race resides that number of which we will never reach in the realization that we are just so alone in this vast universe. Have you been smoking pot? Yeah, a little bit. Limits in a nutshell. You have function. You have number. Function no exist at number, but you're drunk and you're hallucinating, and you want to pretend the function exists there anyways because you're lonely and you have no friends. Limits in a nutshell. Limit overload. Now you can get limits at infinity and seemingly impossible one. Wait, no, 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 don't do that. Why not? Because it's f***ing illegal. You do that one more time and I'll shoot your f***ing head off. <clears throat> so anyways... You can get them at seemingly impossible ones thanks to your local hospital. Limits have just been limited. The second part of calculus is derivatives. Derivatives are cool because you can do stuff with them. They're defined by a limit and they allow us to do many unique things that no other branch of math can do. So now that we've been delusional enough with limits, let's take this a step further and find the slope of a point. But how's that possible? Shut the f up, Jacob. You have no friends. No one gives a sh about your opinion. So anyways, you know how we normally find slopes with the normal slope formula? If we can somehow infinitely shrink the gap between B and A, we can technically have a slope of a tangent line at a specific point, but we can't divide by zero. But wait a minute, we can be delusional, we can use limits, and thus the definition of the derivative was born. Oh, by the way, if you use delta x instead of h, it makes you a cooler person. But Newton said, So he made the power rule. You have this. To find derivative, you do this. Power rule is epic. And now here's a quick derivation. This is the definition of a derivative. If we use Pascal's triangle, this eventually multiplies out to, you know, some abomination. But using Pascal's triangle, we know that the first term has to be x to the power of n, and the second one has to be n x to the power of n minus 1 times delta x. And according to Pascal's triangle, the rest of the terms will have delta x to the power of 2, 3, and so on, yada yada yada, until it reaches n. We don't really care about this stuff before it. Now, notice that if we pretend to expand this, the first and last terms cancel out. Then if we try to cancel out delta x with the denominator, the only term where there's no more delta x's is the first one. Every other one still has one or more delta x's, and since delta x goes to zero, all of those become zero. Now we're left with n times x to the power of n minus 1. All hell power after Newton mailed us over to the Moon Cheese People with FedEx Premium Shipping, the fee was insane, by the way. They finally figured out the dimensions of the biggest cheese. Derivative overload, now there's product rule, quotient rule, chain rule, MVT, the derivative of trick functions, inverse trick functions, logs, exponential functions, e to the power of x- Wait a minute. Huh? Oh, and also you can find the velocity and acceleration of an object. The third part of calculus is integrals. Integrals are cool because you can do stuff with them. Integrals take concepts from derivatives and limits to do things previously unimaginable, like finding the area under a curve or finding the volume of a 3D object. Pretty cool, right? Ray, NPC, NPC. Newton, maybe you should slow down on the pot. Q, I want to find the area under a curve. And how are you going to do that? By drawing an infinite number of rectangles. You know what? You do you. F*** you, Leibniz. This relationship is over. Mmm. <laughs> so anyways, he got bored of drawing rectangles and invented the Integral Which is an Integral part of calculus We can find the area under curve And then he invented the power rule for integrals along with a jumble of other stuff Just make sure to never forget C Never forget the constant C or you will open a black hole and end the universe Introducing the first and second fundamental theorems of calculus
now you can find the area under a curve, displacement, or distance, or velocity, or acceleration, really anything that floats your boat. But oh no, there's functions that aren't power rollable, and there's no quotient rule for inner rules, no power rule, no chain rule, no nothing. What do we do? We're all gonna die- Oh wait. Introducing you sub. Oh cool, now you can integrate pretty much anything. Wait, what about these? Introducing drink sub. What the heck, that feels kind of abstract. But don't worry, cause they're not tested on the AP exam. But just make sure to memorize these. What about integrals where you don't really know what to use up or tricks up for? Well, you just gotta figure that out all on your own. And now you can find the volume of a 3D object with cross sections. Introducing special integrals. Now you can find the integral of 1 over x, which happens to be ln x because integrals are also called antiderivatives, and this makes sense because it's the opposite of what differentiating does. But wait, that means... Well, at least it spells a funny word. Okay, bye.